Thank you. Uh, good morning, everyone. Good afternoon. Uh, and thank you for having me at this conference. I'm actually speaking to you live from uh, Beirut, Lebanon. I'm actually visiting my family and I happen to have the conference at the same time. A uh, very different scene from Seattle uh, in the US. Um, I'm gonna start um, my, my deck. Uh, my presentation here uh, is around how LFAI uh, is supporting and enabling uh, collaboration and innovation uh, in the open source uh, ecosystem. Um, so LFAI is an umbrella foundation that has been uh, hosted with the Linux Foundation. Uh, and the first thing I would like to do is to actually give you a quick overview of the uh, current open source AI ecosystem. Uh, if you look at our landscape available online via L as in landscape dot LFAI dot foundation, you will see that there are really hundreds of open source projects and uh, operating in the open source AI, machine learning, deep learning, and many other categories that are captured on the screen. Uh, you will notice that uh, there are many subcategories within each large category, such as data, deep learning, uh, model, and many others, and a lot of projects trying to uh, basically compete for developer time. Uh, there is a lot of um, uh, redundancy across functions provided and features. Um, however, it is a very growing ecosystem. About two years ago, we were able to capture about 90 projects. Today, we're about a little over 250 projects. Uh, and uh, there are over 150 companies who founded these projects uh, with over 10 companies uh, that are actually labeled as universities. So it is a very growing ecosystem, very strong. Uh, there are over 30,000 developers total active in these projects, uh, very promising. However, at the same time, as we see this, uh, there are several challenges that this ecosystem um, um, has. Uh, I can start from the bottom. There's a lot of fragmentation, as I, as I mentioned. Uh, there's uh, some lack of integration across these different projects. It's really extremely hard, if not impossible, for all these projects to provide integration points across each other. Uh, and of course, there's lack of um, cross-pollination across these different projects. There are also some governance challenges, you know, how projects are run, who makes the decision, how decisions are being made, following what process, and so on. Uh, in most cases, there is no governance or uh, formal governance for the project. In many cases, the governance actually favors uh, a specific company who created the project. Other challenges include that several of these projects started as internal efforts that were meant to provide specific uh, features for different products. And then companies realize that um, it is best for them to open source that piece of code and lobby participants and build a community around it. Uh, and this is how it became an open source. And as these projects grow, uh, it becomes really a challenge to manage the project assets from a website to the IT infrastructure, to the mailing list, uh, to PM, uh, project management, uh, and many other administrative tasks. And if we combine all of these challenges together, it really poses what I call a glass ceiling for project investment. So if you're a company looking to invest in a project in terms of resources and adopting the project uh, in your product or service, when you have different challenges, it really poses a break on and offers a challenge on which project should you pick uh, for your uh, deployment. And this is where LFAI comes into the picture. Uh, so it is a, an umbrella foundation under the Linux Foundation. Uh, it was founded about two and a half years ago in March 2018, with the main goal to support collaboration and open source innovation in uh, AI, machine learning, and deep learning. Our motivations are very simple. We would like to provide a neutral home that is vendor-free, nonprofit organization that will cater for these projects in that ecosystem. We would like to encourage interoperability and uh, increase capability across these different projects. We want to enable closer collaboration. And of course, the best recipe to do this based on our history as a foundation is to host these projects under the same umbrella foundation. We would like to provide unified guidance for end users on interoperability, integration, standards, and what lies ahead for AI, data, and analytics. And of course, as a member-driven company, we would like to provide the best efficiency for our members in terms of spending across these different projects. So these different projects 
require funding in different areas. And when we group them in foundation, we gain a lot of efficiency in these spendings. So as I mentioned, we're about two and a half years old. Uh, we've had a very busy timeline uh, in terms of new projects, new members, a lot of events and community efforts. This chart is actually available online from our GitHub and you can download it and viewing uh, at your own time. In terms of structure and governance, uh, we have a very simple structure and governance model. We have the foundation governance, where we have the governing board with several committees focusing on legal support, uh, budget, strategy, outreach, and marketing. And then we have, in the middle, the technical coordination and launching a new effort. This coordination is managed by what we call the technical advisory council. And on the right-hand side, we have the actual projects that are hosted and incubated in LFAI. And it's very critical to note that the hosted projects have their own technical governance. Every different project have their own governance independently of everybody else. And there is really no uh, interaction really between the projects uh, in terms of governance and the foundation in terms of governance. There's a very clear uh, separation and governance there. Our major efforts pours into five different uh, directions. I mentioned providing a neutral environment that is vendor neutral with an open governance. Uh, we provide uh, a venue for a lot of harmonization and interoperability efforts. We actually have a specific effort um, called the ML workflow and interoperability. It's actually led by a chair from Huawei in China. And the goal is to provide a standard uh, reference uh, for architecture, for an ML workflow, and an implementation as well using the foundation project. i also provide interoperability efforts across the projects. We have, thirdly, a project, uh, an effort focused on trusted and responsible AI. Trust in AI is critical for adoption of services and products infused with AI. And we have a, a major effort in the space that I will mention at a later point. We have several efforts around data models and providing an open source marketplace for models. And as a foundation, we provide funding and several services uh, in terms of awareness and summits and marketing efforts and PM efforts uh, for our hosted projects. We started with nine members about two and a half years ago. Today, we are at 24. And since this event is hosted in China, it's actually my pleasure to, uh, to know that uh, about 50 plus percent of our board members are actually companies uh, coming from China. And we have a great uh, variation of uh, origin. We have companies from the US, from China, uh, from, uh, and from Europe. Uh, and as you notice in the bottom of the page, we have the associate level. Uh, so if there are government agencies and universities uh, professors attending the call. Uh, these organizations are more than welcome to join us for free and have the full benefit of a general membership. Uh, we appreciate their support and uh, we look forward to uh, integrating a lot of our R&D with these uh, R&D organizations. Uh, in terms of projects, we started um, as any Umbrella Foundation with a single project about a year and a half, uh, two years ago. Today we are at 16 projects. Uh, we have two categories of projects. We have the graduate level projects, uh, three of them, Acumus um, and Angel. Angel is from Tencent uh, in China and Onyx, uh, the famous uh, project that a lot of um, adoption has, is happening around model formats. And in terms of incubation projects, uh, we have um, 13 incubation projects. And actually today we're accepting a new project and our agenda is booked for the remainder of the year. Uh, so very strong project pipeline in LFAI. What does it mean to be a foundation project? It means that you are a project hosted in a neutral environment. You have the support of the foundation and the support of its staff. Uh, you have an open governance model that allows anybody to participate in the project equally. Uh, you have project management support. You have marketing support. You have legal support. Uh, you have source code scanning support. Uh, and uh, you have a number of staff across the Vinx Foundation who are eager to help uh, and um, in terms of not just services, but help grow the uh, user base of the project and the contributor base of the project. And if you look at this chart, this is actually uh, not the list of the top tech companies in the world, it's actually the list of the companies hosting projects in LFAI. So you can see the top tech companies hosting projects in LFAI 
and trusting us in incubating their project and driving their adoption uh, within our foundation. So I would highly encourage you, uh, if you're looking to host a project that falls under the open source AI umbrella, to consider LFAI as your target. And looking at this chart, you can see how many of the tech giants have trusted us uh, with their project to be in incubation in our foundation. So we are a growing community. We have 16 projects today. We have uh, close to seven and a half million lines of code across these projects with over 1,100 active developer contributing with a very strong flow of commits. Uh, we have 46 known organization contributing. That also includes the 10 university, 10 plus universities that are contributing to the project and the really large number of unknown contributors that are uh, anonymous, meaning contributing via their Gmail account or Yahoo account and private email addresses. So it's a very growing community. Uh, we have, uh, as I mentioned, a strong marketing and PR effort for our hosted projects. Uh, as a reference, in 2019, we had 37 announcements related to events and project releases and whatnot. Uh, only in the first half of 2020, we've had so far 26, and we've had uh, really a very extremely busy uh, second half of 2020. Um, parallel to marketing, we also have a very strong event-oriented um, culture. Uh, we believe in building communities around events and bringing people together to collaborate and code together. Uh, and uh, create integration across different projects. Uh, so these are just examples you see on the screen. Uh, we have different types of events. We have large summits called LFAI summits that are typically co-located with other major Linux Foundation conferences. Uh, we have uh, LFAI days, which are uh, hosted by member companies in LFAI and mostly targeted um, for local geographies. We also have developer day and many other specific events uh, that our project require and we support them uh, with these. I also mentioned universities. So we have a very strong lineup of universities that are participating in the projects. Uh, so I invite you to uh, look at the logos to understand what projects, uh, I'm sorry, what universities are active with us. And I also encourage you if you are a university professor or a academician in universities to join us at the associate level of membership, uh, which will grant you a lot of uh, benefits and uh, allow you participation in all of our activities. So incubating projects uh, in LFAI is very easy. Uh, the website uh, mentioned on the slide provides you all the details uh, and the committee that is responsible for voting in and welcoming a new incubation project is called the DAC Technical Advisory Council. Um, the committee meets uh, every two weeks and uh, we're generally booked about two months in advance. Uh, so far it's kind of very unique situation. We were almost booked all the way till end of December. Uh, so as I mentioned, if you're really interested in uh, hosting a project with us, please reach out uh, as soon as possible so we can schedule you and discuss the process with you and get you going. Uh, there are a lot of resources that we have for projects. Uh, I will not go through them. I'm just uh, mentioning them and you can uh, uh, visit the website as mentioned on the slides. Um, so we are really excited uh, about our progress. Uh, we've grown quite a bit in the past uh, two years. Uh, we started with nine companies and one project. Today we are at 24 companies with 16 projects and going very strong for the rest of the year. Uh, I would like to invite you to follow us uh, online via our social channels on our mailing list and or our blog where we announce a lot of the activities, events, project releases, new project joining, new member joining, and uh, many other activities that we um, push uh, and uh, we organize. And uh, I would like to thank you for your time. Uh, again, uh, if you are a company uh, outside of hosting with us, you're also very welcome to join us as a foundation and support our mission in accelerating development and innovation in open source projects. You can follow up directly with me and my email is embedded in the slide. Uh, and for resources, you can visit these different resources uh, that are available on the website. I hope you have really a great virtual conference. Um, this is my first time speaking at this event in terms of um, typically we present face to face. So I hope you enjoyed the presentation uh, and thank you very much for your time. Okay, thank you. Thank you, thank you so much. Thank you for 
presentation. Thank you. If anybody have questions, uh, you can ask in your chat box. No more questions? So somebody is asking um, for mm -hmm. me to show my face. So here we are, live from Lebanon. Yeah. <laughs> yes. <laughs> You can ask Dr. Abraham. Oh, no more question. So before uh, we disconnect, if there are no questions, <laughs> I would like to show this. I got received this during my last trip to China. Oh, so, uh, cool. This is from, uh, I received it from, uh, from right? very, very close friends in China. Yeah. Uh, so it actually sits in my main room. And mm -hmm. everybody comes to me, visit me. I tell them the story about it. <laughs> <laughs> Super happy with it. Thank you. <laughs> oh, it's really cool. It's really cute. Yeah. Okay. Is any questions from our attendees? Okay. No more questions. Okay. Thank you, Dr. Ibrahim. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Have a good day, everyone. Bye bye. Thank you.